you know, if you're having a bad day, you know, wife's nagging you, boss being pain in the ass forever, buy yourself a tunnel ram. Makes you feel better. Dan here, JD Speed Shop. Woo, 57 Chevy, two door hardtop. So uh, we're, we're back working on this. We were working on it for a bunch. I was looking at my camera early December. So it's, it was like almost a full month before I got back to this thing. That's crazy. In the last video, we kind of patched the motor together a little bit and we got the steering working. So that's pretty good. I think the next step, um, it's been brutally cold here and uh, we're actually getting a bunch of snow today and tomorrow, like a lot of snow, which as much as that sucks, it brings in a little bit of warm weather. So I don't mind being on the ground. Well, not that I like it, but uh, so, I thought we'll jack the back end up. I hopefully have other floor jack or jack stand somewhere, but uh, we'll get going on that. So underneath, we have to set the pinion angle and weld that all in. I have to put a transmission mount on this thing, so I believe it just has a two by four holding up the transmission. And I think the whole mount and everything is just sitting in there. So we gotta get that taken care of. But the motor's in where it's gonna be. I think it's, it's pretty good. It can't go any further back. It's literally rocked up against the firewall. So that's good, I guess. Um, while we're under there, I'd like to maybe get the brakes going. Because it's like it's like stages for hot rods, and, and myself anyways, where a car that has, well, wheels on it, that's like base model, wheels that hold air and roll, or tires, even better when the brakes aren't locked. Steers, whoo we're really getting somewhere. And steers and brakes, well, now we really have something because... Uh, Someone can sit in this thing and actually drive it and work the brakes while you push it or do whatever, tow it around. That makes life pretty easy. That's basically as good as it gets before it runs and drives under its own power. So that's where we're headed with this thing. Now I did pick up a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. Actually, Camaro parts are showing up. These are wheel tubs. Got to put those next door and screw around with a bunch of that stuff. We got some miscellaneous hardware. So that's pretty slick. I went and got uh, miscellaneous stuff from you know Princess Auto. So clamps, whatnot, got some aluminum fuel line, also got oh, a rear brake line, fuel line, metering block, and uh, transmission mount. So we have basically everything we need to set the drive line, set the diff, and then we can actually measure for a drive shaft. We may very well have one. I have a piggy pile lately of Tri-5 and miscellaneous drive shafts, but everything, I have a drive shaft that would fit this motor setup probably but the rear end is different so for a, a stock rear end we'll see what fits this fuel tank it was outside as you can tell but it is actually brand new maybe has a couple thousand miles on it brand new tank brand new sender so that's perfect it was set up for efi so it has an extra little kind of vent or return i guess so we'll, we'll plug that off probably we'll let that warm up i think we have straps there was straps actually right here at one point. Oh yeah, there we go. Two I think those are Tri-5 straps. So if the ones in it are junk, we'll reuse those. Fuel line, brake line front to back. The brakes on the rear are brand new. I thought I had lost the brake lines through the front, but they're actually in the car. So that's pretty slick. They're uh, right there. And I put the the banjo nuts or bolts, whatever you want to call them, are in the caliper. So that's pretty uh, pretty sweet. And all we got left is just the master there, do a little bit of plumbing. And we should be pretty much set. I will have to put the header on and see where we're going to put the metering block. This thing doesn't have any inner fenders, and I don't think I have any, and I don't think I'm going to run any, at least not right now. Usually what I'll do is I'll put the metering block on the inner fender so we'll have to figure out a place we can put it up against the firewall or who knows what that's a problem for future damage probably won't be till either later tonight or tomorrow and by then we'll have it figured out so we're gonna jack the back end up put some stands out of this thing i got something in my eyeball i really want to get the transmission dialed away mounted in there and i think we should set the rear end just because the rear end's in there and it's clamped but if you crank on it, it will rotate. So it's always a little sketchy when trying to jack this thing up or do whatever. I'm not a big fan of that. And then again, we can measure for a drive shaft. So that's uh, it's pretty good. We get one this weekend. Okay, I'll see you when this thing's up in the air and maybe I've uh, cleaned up just a scotch. Okay, I'm just going to show you guys right quick what we're going to do. A lot of it's going to be kind of a pain to get to. 
So you might have to just take my word for some of it, but I'll show you. So we got a thing up in the air. Um, pretty simple. Ah, ooh, ah, ooh, hang on. So that's our, you know, mount. I got to put a proper rubber mount. Ooh, I got a yoke in it. That's sweet. Um, you can see on the edge there, that's the, the bracket. And it is just sitting there. So we're going to have to clean that up. Looks like I'm going to have to grind a little to get a clean weld. But that'll be fine. And uh, it kind of, the nice thing with this, this is a Tri-5 mount. So it self-centers everything. So that's perfect. And then back here, ah, we have the suspension supported. Oh, magnet. Now we're going to have a little bit of screwing around to do. So the problem is this rear end, I have my trusty trait measure out. I measure from like the backing plate to basically on the leaf spring on the outside, just whatever you can do. So you can match side to side. And we had seven and a quarter inches of clearance on that side and seven on that, which means the rear end has to scoot that way by uh, a quarter of an inch, which is too much of a problem, but we gotta do that. And once we get that in, then we have to decide the pitch of the pinion angle and all kind of different schools of thought there. This. Do, 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 do. Oh, I can barely see, but I look good. Typically, you want to do kind of equal opposite of what the transmission is um, going down. But on a leaf spring car like this, the idea is when you're accelerating, the, the pinion tends to want to walk up because it'll obviously twist on the leaf springs. So I'm probably going to give it a few degrees point down. That way, when you stomp on it, it'll want to climb up, but still be happy with the... Uh, the transmission and where it's at there. Otherwise, under here, man, look at that brand new floor. It looks good. We gotta clean up our little weld scene there. It's a little ugly. A couple of, couple of schmeglies. Little uh, seam sealer and undercoat. It'll be just fine. And then we have no shocks on it. We have the mounts on. That's pretty sweet. And yeah, anyways, once we send the pinion angle, I'll kind of tack everything together. We'll have to pull off these uh, big kind of U-bolts and then we'll just buzz the whole way around and it'll be nice. But I've got it all cleaned up and it looks like it's pretty much ready to go. So, uh, unfortunately though, we have it supported on the rear end. So we do have to screw around with that. And, and when you are checking your angles and all that stuff, you want to make sure you have it with the weight on the vehicle. So right now, I mean, it's on jack stands. It's basically at ride height. Motor transmission are in it. I mean, it doesn't have a tank of fuel and all that, but let's be honest, it's basically 90% of the way of sitting how it's going to sit. There's an interior in it. It's uh, missing glass and a, and a fuel tank full of gas. So we'll call it good enough. Uh, so I'm going to mess around. We're going to have to change the jack points to the frame, loosen the springs, knock it over a little bit, tighten it all back up and get back to exactly where we are. But I probably should take the wheels off too. That would make my life much easier. Okay. So we got this thing. I did a bunch of screwing around. I jacked it up. We put the jack stands under the frame, let the diff hang. That allows to loosen the U-bolts and center the diff. It was only out, well, it was a half inch more on one side and the other, so a quarter inch out. Knocked it over. I marked everything where it was. I snugged up the U-bolts so it shouldn't move. Jacked it up. Put the jack stands on the diff so we're sitting ride height. Ish. So that's, that's that. Now, here's what we're going to do. You can do this on your back. Hate life. On a floor jack, set the penny angle. So you get yourself one of these fancy dancy, uh, you know, Amazon special $40 angle finders. Now what you're gonna do, you'll see. So this here says that the, what is it? Yeah, so the rear end, the rear end is up two and a half degrees. You can zero it. And now it thinks we're working on a flat surface. Which that's all that really matters because the transmission and the rear end are going to be centered here. Oh, can you see my breath? Oh, it's cold. So now let's get under here and try and find some sort of flat surface or something if we can here. And that there says we're like oh, two, two and a half, something like that. And that's so call it two degrees. And if I move it this way. So the number gets bigger. That means we have a two degree up. So the transmission 
It's going up a couple of degrees. Ah, oh God, I'm stuck. I'm fat. Okay, now let's shimmy on down here to the rear end. I guess I could have swept the floor. I guess I was going to do it at the beginning of the video, eh? Might have made life a little easier. Now we got to find something here. Uh, and that's 1.3 down ish, right? Oh no, it's got to go down more. So it's 1.4. Oh, do I have it upside down? Maybe I should do it the same way just in case. No, okay. So the diff is two degrees pointing upwards. And what we want to do is knock it so it's two degrees going downwards. So I'll use that hammer and gingerly kind of whack this and hopefully it'll kind of rock its way down until we're two degrees down. So equal and opposite. Now I'm no expert. Don't take my word for this. This is what I've done a bunch of times. Everybody has their own way of doing it and, and all that sort of stuff. But you don't want the drive shaft to be uh, the U joints to be like on a plane. They'd like to be a couple of degrees working load. So we should be good there and uh, kind of carry on. Oh, you know what? I should, I bought a brake line today, but I actually, I forgot. This is a legit one. So if I got like a 64 Chevy two one, I can just use that. Well, that'll make life easier than having to plumb everything. Oh man, today just got better. Other than it's on the wrong side. I want to run on that side. Yeah. Life's little victories. So I'm going to get this kind of lined up. We'll set the camera up. Then I'm just going to go ahead and kind of tack it wherever I can. <clears throat> then we can take kind of one U-bolt off, buzz it in, do it on the you know, other side, move floor jacks or, or jack stands wherever we have to. Bear in mind, you do want these somewhat snug. Um, this does affect kind of how it sits. And if it's all wrong and you have vibrations or issues, they sell little shims so you can shim it up or down from there. So be warned, this is not any sort of instructional video. It's just what I'm doing, um, which may be wrong. So feel free to roast me in the comments as per usual. Get the welder set up and we'll knock this thing down and carry on from there. Well, we got our welded in. Uh, didn't weld great. I like the uh, it would weld great to the tube, and I had cleaned up the the saddle or the perch, whatever it is, pretty well. It just didn't seem happy for whatever reason. So I don't know. We got it in there. It's uh, it's fine for what it's gonna be. If we were actually like be beating hell this car, maybe be a little you know more concerned. But hey, she took just fine. I put a little more heat in it. And, went over it again let's be honest it's a crappy 10 volt with a bone stock motor automatic and an oversized tire so this thing is a poser and and if it breaks we get to fix it so uh sweet then i'll get like to title it i'm an idiot i screwed up you were all right and then uh, people will watch so that's pretty good anyway that's what we're gonna leave for now i was gonna take the tank out 
Put the socket on, give it one brap with the impact, and dirt fell in my eye. So I spent the last 20 minutes inside getting that out. So, you know what? It's like uh, knowing to fold them, and that is what's happening right now. Kenny Rogers knew. So, I'm going to take a break. We'll let everything charge up, and we'll be back at it tomorrow, where we'll change the fuel tank. i probably got to just cut the... It's just like... Uh, I think it uses carriage bolts. We'll use all-thread rod. Cut it out, put the new tank in. Actually, it has... Well, it's under there. Notice it has the filler neck and all that and i think next door i have o-rings and all that so the tank can like go in and be like done i'm just gonna run some 3 8 aluminum because believe it or not this is like the cheapest hard line you can buy this was 25 bucks for 25 feet a buck a foot i'll take it i don't know if it wears through really easy or not but i mean it's lightweight racing stuff we'll make sure we insulate really well i'm gonna get that proper uh 64 chevy 2 brake line because I'll just be like thread in and then I can run a line to the front and I'm golden. And plumb up front. I got to get some brake fluid actually because I am out. But yeah, like it's, uh, I don't know, I was putting this thing off. And it sure seems to be going together in a hurry. So let that be a lesson to you guys. The last couple days I have not been very motivated to work on this car for whatever reason. I don't know why. I've been struggling. But you get out there, you start working and a few things start happening. Before you know it, this thing now steers. It'll have breaks in another couple of days. So in the matter of uh, one week where the evening's working, it'll have all that stuff. We're pr I could pressure for a drive shaft. Not that it's a big rush. I don't have a shifter in the thing. So we put a drive shaft in. It's going to be in neutral anyway. So I'll save that money until, uh, until I have to spend it. So those Camaros ain't going to be cheap. And then hopefully by then, actually, I'm really hoping for glass. I really want to put glass in this thing. So I babbled enough. You'll probably leave me a comment below saying I'm babbling too much. And I will see you tomorrow. Well, it's a new day. Um, we had a bunch of snow. Now we have a bunch of cold, so that's pretty awesome. Um, we have some snow inside. Contrary to popular belief, this garage is not quite as insulated as you might have thought. <sighs> so when I'm on my back, it's cold. Anyway, I think first step, I got to go in and get coveralls on or something else because this is not doing it. I ran around and got a bunch of parts, and where we left it, we were going to change the fuel tank. I think while I'm under there, hating life already, I'm going to grind my welds, really grind into the saddles of the uh, of the of the axle, like a saddle or whatever you want to call it there, and re-weld it, just so I, I don't know, might as well do it now. Then, um, the, the fuel tank is really held by two straps, and it uses carriage bolts. I don't know if you can see in there or not, but we're just going to use all thread rod and some nuts because that we have in stock. Uh, replace those, dump that out, new one in. That'll be super easy. New O-ring on the filler together. Man, look at these wheel tubs. God, that looks good. Um, what else do we got to do under there? Oh, brakes. So I had originally purchased, this is like my go-to um, brake dealio for, well, Tri-5 Chevys or whatever. This is out of like a 70 ish nova um and it's got a nice little that hole right there just for connecting it so you can connect it to like the diff inspection clever with a little bracket or something like that if you're running a four nine inch or like an old school chevy uh the center section pops out i just like weld a a bolt right to the uh the case and you just run a nut down it because it comes a stud and then obviously you have your two deals that go out so i originally was like oh, i'll do that and plummet well i forgot when i was under there this dips out of the 64, so it's a little different. And the way I had plumbed it before, it's already um, got its lines together and has a T in it. And the T then has let's see, a three-way female T. So we're going to use this line I picked up. And this will just thread into the T. So basically what, what's on the thing right now is this. It's got, uh, you know, both out to the sides. And this would be a female end. So we're just recreating it. But it'll save me a bunch of time screwing around and uh, ultimately... It was like $12, so we'll do that. I have all kinds of uh, fuel line, brake line, uh, metering block in there, all sorts of miscellaneous. And I got a bunch of these where I use little, little P-clamps, so they're just insulated deals. So we're going to use a pile of those. And I got some, this might be a little overkill, but it was on sale, 10 gauge. So we're going to use that to run our fuel pump. Um, so basically we're going to start away at the back and work our way forward. We need to run brake line, fuel line, and I guess electrical to the fuel pump. The pump will be somewhere 
back here, electric pumps, they don't like to suck, they like to push, so closer to the tank, and if you can get it below the, uh, the column of fuel, whatever you wanna call it, so it's kinda like siphoning in once it's primed, is absolute best. I think I have a pump on the shelf. So we kinda get that going, so it's gonna be a lot of under the car, ugly work, which, uh, I don't know, I might just kinda time lapse it, or I might kinda show you along the way, cause I'm not happy with being under there today. Anyway, you can get that going, that's just a few lines up, and then at the front we can plumb everything, bleed the brakes, and ultimately have kind of a decent little car. In here, I have miscellaneous trim. So that's pretty slick, but the big thing that's in here, which I'm concerned about for the next video probably, is all this stuff, which is for the windows. So hopefully I have enough to make all the windows go in, because that would be perfect. Worst case, we're gluing the back windows in, or, or not gluing them in, but put them in with like, We'll build a little bracket just to, to lock them in. I typically only put the back windows down most of my stuff. In a hard top, it does look very cool, but I want glass in this thing. So yeah, I think we'll do that. Maybe a little trim and stuff like that. We gotta make sure we have to match the quarter side to side so the big tires fit easy and kind of keep going. But that's the plan for today. Buckle up, I'm gonna change. See you shortly. You know, it wasn't that long ago, these were my nice clothes. Now they're uh, dog beds. Anyway, now that I'm all warm, I'm gonna lie right on the ground and uh, cut that fuel tank out, dry everything, re-weld it, and see if we can stab that fuel tank back in. Should be a fun little 45 second time lapse for you guys and uh, an hour of my life that I hate. Sweet. All right, new tank is in. Um, it's a little rusty, but there's like double walls, which will be fine. I just re-welded the know, one side of each of those hangers. I think it's fine. I, I'm looking at it. She's ugly, but uh, I think for what we're doing, it'll be fine. This thing's not gonna be, uh, well, currently anyways, not gonna be any real issues. I have a feeling that the rear end will break in half before the welds do. Oh, I thought I heard someone outside. Anyways, so now what we're gonna do I'm going to replace this brake line, which I had cut on the other one. Um, that's our fitting in there. We're going to run our line to the back, and that's going to end up somewhere in the front here. So it'll just be a, a lot of extra line. And this is the clamps we're using, just little insulated clamps, so you can't go wrong. So we'll do brake line on one side, and same idea with the aluminum fuel line on the other. I have got three eighths, so I got just some bigger ones. I'm just gonna self tap those in the frame. <clears throat> People drill holes, use those uh, nuts or deals, but it works fine. Uh, up top, so that's just what we used instead, just a little all thread rod and uh, <coughs> oh, got a little cough there. Uh, I don't know where to put the other one. Oh, this is what they look like originally. A little, a little, uh, what's it called? Bumper style nut, carriage bolt, nailed it. So we're gonna run both those to the front and then honestly all I have to do is then join in the uh, the filler neck has to go in, but it's got a big piece of rubber in there. There's not really any support. So I'll have to kind of get that all taken care of at the same time. Oh. Spare parts. Um, squirrel. Realistically, it looks pretty good on there. I mean, there's a little, it's a little rusty, but a little undercoating fixes all, and it's structurally sound, which is all I really care about. 
I don't think I'm going to film running it to the front. I mean, it's just going to be two, two runs, lying on my back, crawling around, self-tappering. It'll be terrible looking. I'll show you when I got it all taken care of. I also got proper bolts and hardware for the transmission. So I'll get that mounted properly. I'll show you that. And then ultimately we'll be in the front, which I'll probably take you know, the radiator out or whatever. I want to run the brake lines to the front, bleed the brakes, and this thing will be like a legitimate roller. Life's pretty good today. I've got a lot done. Frozen. I'm gonna show you what I did. I'm taking a break. Anyway, oh, I am the cold concrete. I know, cardboard, all those things. Meh. So things didn't go exactly as I was hoping. So that's where I ended up mounting the fuel pump. But the problem is the in is on that side and the out is on that side. And I'd like to put it on the inside of the frame rail. However, the shape of this. Um, it's fatter on one side. Um, so when I spun it around, this little thing didn't work and there's a bunch of issues, so whatever. So we're gonna put it there. Now really it's not a big issue. We can run our line in and, and up here along the side, which is, you know, it's like on the outside of the frame, the exhaust to be tucked up in there. The problem is mufflers. I typically put the muffler kind of right here with a, with a side pipe exit uh, on a fender well set up so we'll just have to put the muffler up front here It'll be like a muffler and then a straight piece of pipe and then out the side so us hang on aesthetically it'll look a little weird but just a little muffler and be fine or we're gonna run a glass pack but no big deal i could also screw around with this down the road i guess and make a standoff and kind of do whatever but uh that's what i did for now so so be it. I don't have any fittings. I gotta get those shortly here. And then in here, that's our new brake line right up and over. And all the way up to the front. I then, oh, I mounted the transmission cross member. That's all welded in nice, centered, and ready to go. So that's good. We can put a drive, measure for a drive shaft. We gotta put all the e-brake system in, but that's, that's for another day. Uh, now, slide on. Get up to the front here. Oh, we got the big boy kicking on. I had this going when I was on the ground. So we have our brake lines run, uh, or our brake line, I should say, run, and our fuel line. This will kind of go up around into a regulator somewhere on the firewall. And then this, we got to figure out where exactly we want to put the metering block. So I think the next thing I'm going to do, well, I'm going to take a break, warm up. I'm going to put the header on. We'll see exactly where everything lines up. And we'll probably actually put a tack bolt on that steering box while we're at it too. Put the header on and decide if we want to mount the, the portioning valve off of the, uh, the like a bracket off the poster. Man, no, master cylinder. The cold has frozen my brain. Or if I want to maybe go ahead somewhere and mount it on the inside. I was thinking just inside of the frame right there would be an easy spot for it as well. It might be the way to go. And then uh, just tuck it over into the one brake across to the front and straight back. And we just gotta do a couple of couple of lines in. Uh, we would have to go straight back, down, and back in. I have in the past had that block. What did I do? I did something funny, but the block was too high or too low or something. And it kind of caused some brake bleeding issues. So if I can have it as low as possible, is probably the plan, my thoughts are. Anyway. I'll see you guys in a little bit. We'll get this kind of all dialed together, plumb that little section up, get Danny out here, bleed the brakes, call it a day. So this here's what I ended up with. We snaked our line in there. Um, I'm missing a little clip there, but the flex line's all there, just goes around the front of the motor. That's a factory kind of location deal. Now what I'm gonna do, I've never done it this way, so we'll see if it works or it doesn't. I put the block on the outside of the frame, which I think should be fine. I don't think the, the tire will touch it, but I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, hopefully it's good. Uh, I put it around the steering box so we can still get that out. And, uh, you know, a couple of little loop-de-loops and we should be fine. That made it just easy to get the line to the back versus having to kind of go up and over and all sorts of screwing around. If I don't put it there, I don't know where. I mean, I could put it down back under the, under the seat or something like that, which, which people do. And I mean, honestly, I could just move it back if I wanted to, but that was the easiest to get to. And I think as the wheel turns, 
it'll get into to that little area there. But the little tires we're running, I'm not too worried about it. We can always adjust the stops. Now, up top here, we're gonna have to go out, straight back and down. People are always telling me, oh, you should loop them and this and that and all these things. You know what, I'm not really too concerned about it. Uh, I guess there is some flex. The, the line I'm using, again, I would have to say it, it's not copper. It's a uh, nickel copper brake. It's, it's brake line. It's very flexible and easy to use. So if I go a little bit up and over and kind of down or whatever I have to do, we should be fine. I'll do like a you know, straight 90. Straight 90 back. If I go up, that's what, I had, that's what I had issue with air before, but straight back and down, right to the firewall, down into the top of the block, and then we should be fine. So I'm gonna do right now, I'll set the camera up, maybe I'll make a line uh, in real time. We'll get both done. So they'll be attached down there, and then we'll uh, we'll put them in there just loose. We have to uh, bleed the master, so we'll do that right quick. But once we get those two lines in, I believe we can put brake fluid in this thing and test for some leaks. Um, I may have to adjust the rod on the on the brake pedal. At the very least, I'll take it apart, clean it. What there is, there's a little like uh, clevis kind of deal, and then just it's an adjustable kind of kind of setup. So now is the time to take it apart while well, everything is not around it. The headers fit good. Everything has to come apart yet. I've uh, I realized what's under there. The braces, these pink braces actually hold the front of the body down. They're not welded to the floor yet, so I gotta do that. So the header's gotta come off. I have all the steering shaft. There's still lots of stuff I did weld the motor mounts in, because that's all taken care of, but this is a bit of a slap it all together and take it apart. Uh, again, fender wall headers, LS, tunnel ram. Eh, I wouldn't say it hasn't been done, but you can't just go out and buy a kit for it, and typically, you have to kind of fabricate it, take it apart, put it back together, and, and kind of keep keep giving her. But uh, yeah, we're making lots of progress. I'm pretty stoked. Well, I'll get the camera set up. We'll build a line real quick. I'm going to build those at a quarter, which I think I have inside. I hope I have inside. With some fittings, otherwise we got some problems. So this here, there's a scans on brake line. Brake line, focus. Um, 25 foot, I think it's like 25 bucks. And it comes with... A bunch of fittings, which is handy. So of course we use what we need and then the rest we put there to forget. Now, I have the master on and I've put the fittings in that I want and there's fittings in the in the block downstairs. So I like to do that because essentially we can fit the line in, bend it any which way we want. It'll basically be looking like it's gonna be. Then we take it apart and just flare the ends and we're done. It's just that easy. The master is loose, so I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but we gotta take that off. Anyway, but realistically, we're just gonna have something kinda just gonna go out, back down, and then in. Now, the way this block works, the front port is for front brakes, the rear brake is for, or rear port is for rear brakes, obviously. This thing here, big reservoir in the front, we'll put that to the front brakes, little in the back go there. Aftermarket kits and all that have all sorts of different ways. A lot of times they actually have, uh, the block right close in these little kind of curly Q lines that go right all to it's all nice and neat and stuff which is great but uh, we cheaped out on this kit and now we're suffering as per usual so we should be able to do that and just run away from obviously anything heat anything that spins anything like that so uh typically i mean you know fender wall headers are a bit of an issue if you don't have that you're, you know your exhaust on that side you just want to avoid the uh if you have any shift linkage or the uh, steering column, you know, anything that's going to spin, you obviously don't want to rub it on there. And we'll go down. It's such a short run, it's just go back, down, and in. I don't think we'll have to secure it in any way. It'll be uh, just fine. So, let's get the tripod out. We'll get this thing cut up. We'll make our lines. It'll just be that easy. Then we can put some brake fluid in it, find our leaks, finally screwed up. Then get Danielle out, bleed them, and call it a day. Man, it's been... I'm ready for a hot shower. All right, so get this stuff out of the bag. All oh, light. Look at that. Hollywood professionalism. Man, Danny, whatever light this is, the magnet on it, it's not made in America. I'm sure all the cobalt mines were, though, and they made a lithium battery. Now, this stuff is super easy to, you know, malleable. That's why I love it. Now... 
We're just gonna kinda cut a chunk of it off. I'm pretty wasteful at this because uh, I'm lazy. And ultimately, you know what? It's so cheap, who cares? I have bags and bags of these kicking around. Every now and again, they get a sale on, and uh, you, know, you get two or three at a time, hang them on the wall, they don't go bad. And it seems like for me, when I'm doing brakes, I'm doing every single piece of the brakes. I don't know the last car I've done where I have just, uh, you know, need like a brake line or a brake hose or something like that. Usually it's all or nothing. Okay, so this here, let's kind of put a bit of a, a bend in her. Oh, that's a little bit too much. Screwed it up already. We want the bend a little further back. You know what, we'll use this side. There we go. Gentle, gentle. So this will, We'll have to go straight out, we'll flare the end, and it's backwards. So I'll actually go that way. We can kind of get an idea of where we want, where we want the bend to be. Oh, you guys are in the way. So, something about like that. Let's give her another, another little precious bend. That's what we're working with. Now, guys do this with hard line, like all the time, steel line. It comes to looking just fine, but there we go. So now all I have to do is kind of eyeball, I'll be under the car, so you'll take my word for it, but I'm gonna do the same thing down there. We can cut this any length we want. If we wanna bring it closer, we'll flare both ends, put it in there and be done with it. So I will carry on with that. You know what, I'll, I'll just get this line done up real quick and I'll show you flaring, because that's always important. And then the other side we'll just do uh, right quick. Put the brake fluid in it. So this here is our piece. So it's gonna go in kind of something like that, ultimately just avoiding the fender well headers. Now, we're gonna have this one run long. <clears throat> the other one will run kind of short. So step one, always put your fitting on first. If you don't do that, you will cry a little bit. Now I have, this brake tool I've had for a while now, it's pretty handy. It was expensive when I bought it. I think it was three or four hundred dollars. It's a master cool kit. I think there's other places that make kind of cheaper ones now. Um, Eastwood Company I know does and, and stuff like, not the exact same, but same idea. This is super, super handy. It's like a little hydraulic handle thing. So you give it the first one, it gives it its first flare. that go out and then it has a cone goes in and gives it its double flare so it's just I mean it's no different than those El Cheapo KD flaring tools you can kind of get it's just easier it's like the snap-on version right and uh, it all depends on how many brake lines you are flaring I'm endlessly flaring lines but it gives you a perfect flare every time what's in it but that's that and the nice thing about this stuff because coppery stuff it's so soft it'll crimp real nice i'll do the other one we'll get in there well i'll do i'll do the rest of it get it all together um we'll just make sure it all fits the top lines we'll just put in kind of finger tight because the master has to come off we gotta put it in the vise we'll break bleed or uh, bench bleed it real quick which just means we're gonna get the air out of the system and then we'll uh yeah start putting it together i should be good the only thing i don't know is the back brakes, the two lines that go to the wheel cylinders. They are new, I did make them, but they've been sitting around so they might've got kinked or bent or broken or ripped off or something like that. But I believe the back brakes are all brand new. So yeah, let's get after it. Look at that. Now this is obviously kind of hanging down a little bit, but basically there's about three fingers worth of space between the closest uh, line and the exhaust. On the back here we got, oh, Lots, lots of room. I know it looks a little tight, but there's lots of airspace. We shouldn't have too many issues. Uh, what I did on something else was I just you, I made a little aluminum bracket or a, a heat shield, sorry, that just kind of clipped on or uh, or clamped out the two 
two bolts or two studs and just kind of held out there you know kind of in the middle and that gives a whole lot of heat protection but anyways these are all just finger tights so we'll just go ahead and loosen these off and uh, I'll see you in the other garage where we'll bleed this master right quick and put it back open up a bunch of bleeders and see what happens okay so we're set up with the vise these two lines here I made these up years ago same thing all of this is just you know miscellaneous brake line a couple of fittings uh, you wrap them over and you drop them to the bottom of the master you want them submerged in fluid um, and the idea is you're basically just going to bleed out any air so we're going to use a screwdriver in place of the brake pedal so the brake pedal all it's doing is as you step on the brake it's pushing a rod forward and back which goes in the back of your master now that's where we're going to take apart and clean and lubricate and make sure it's adjustable because you want to make sure when you're when your uh, foot is off the brake there's some play in the in the rod you don't want it jammed in there because if it is it'll hold pressure in the brake system so now we're going to go ahead and just kind of push this in and that's just going to force any air that's in the system some of these come pretty bled this actually isn't really jamming a whole bunch of air so I guess we should be fine well there's still some air coming out there it's mostly just fluid though so you want to make sure there's no air bubbles so let's work a few more times we'll put it back on the car um, we'll secure it well you know what before we do that I'll uh, next time I see you we'll have that rod and I'll show you all about that so we make sure it's all cleaned and easy to use this is a little rod so the brake pedal goes through there with a little uh, a little pin and that's what ends up kind of pushing through now you can see it's threaded it goes through has a little lock nut so let's go ahead put this over here uh, over here we'll put this Right quick, give her a little love. I actually, the brake pedal was seized, so I had to screw around with that a bunch. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. So you can, you know, clean this up any way you want, wire wheel the, the threads and all that, but should be okay. And then there's a little kind of knurled spot here, man. This is. This has seen some moisture in today. It's pretty pitted up, but for what we're doing, that's what we got. So same deal here. We're just gonna. That's well, actually not too bad even. So we work that back and forth, and uh, realistically, we should be able to take it right out. Run that nut off. Wire wheel it. And just make this so it can be finger tight or, or finger adjustable I should say sorry because what we're gonna do let's get this over real quick yeah we're gonna put it all together and this will essentially kind of pull this piece out until it just makes contact in that little uh, you know little holster it's got and then kind of loosen it just so there's a little bit of play then we'll run this jam nut down onto that and it's set just that easy so i'm going to get this cleaned up real quick here and then we'll uh, be right back to it is everybody ready for our favorite segment of break up break, break job oh. oh let's try again try again turn it off everyone ready for our favorite segment break, break job, job break, break bleed. bleed no break up <laughs> Damn it. Okay, one more time. No. I'm not adding any of that. We don't fake it here. We're not like the big guys. One shot. Um, so, I got the brakes master in. Everything's run. Oh, this one is already self bled. Hang on here. I want to show something before you hop in there. I don't even need you anymore. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> no, it just saves time. So, I put the little rod back in. As you can see here, just the, the pedal has a little bit of movement before it actually touches the master. So I was gravity bleeding these things while I was, uh, I was screwing around mostly. So the front one should be okay. We'll tighten that one up. We don't have anything out the other side. And the backs, 
I, that was on sale. Brass hammer, one one pound brass hammer, seventeen dollars. It's probably worth that in scrap. What people don't know is that this is how you use it. Yeah, that's all right. So, anyways, <laughs> we'll use that to break bleed, but we'll just go ahead and set up the camera. Danny's gonna hop in this thing. Don't worry, I've cleaned it, disinfected. Oh, I have a thing now. I'm I'm always looking for hammers. So when I go to a store, if there's a hammer on sale, I'm buying it. Doesn't matter what it is. Claw hammer, I don't care. Dead blow, brass, I'm buying it. And I will use it all wrong, as per usual, because I'm out of hammers. And I, hammers are my favorite thing to own, other than like grinders and Tri-5 Chevrolets. How do I get in here? It's a two-hour hardtop. You just get in and look cool. Okay, but it's Let's get set up. Okay, so we got uh, the front brakes kind of closed up. Well, not kind of, they are closed up. I'm going to lie my back. I hate my life because it's so cold. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Okay, so we're going to close up the driver's side. Well, Danny, uh, we pump it. Because as usual, hang on, not yet. Well, you said pump it. I was just talking to the loyal viewers. Okay, hang on. What so we're going to go. As usual. What do I as usual? You're fantastic as usual. Okay, step down, back up, and step down, back up. Just keep doing that. Sounds like there's something happening. Oh, yeah, hey, we got brake fluid back here. Keep going. I didn't see any leaks yet. Yeah, that'll happen. Hang, hang on here. I got to, uh... Can I hold it? Yeah, you might as well just hold it down while I slap this bleeder. Oh, he's got fluid back there, so that's good. So we filled the line all the way to the back. You can let it go. Well, what there probably is is there's front brakes. It didn't really drop as much as I would have thought. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, we'll just see what happens here. Well, enter fast motion unless something interesting happens. Okay, bumper again. There you go. Oh, and now it's real loosey-goosey. Loosey-goosey where? Well, it just is not fighting me like it was before. Okay, go again. Again. Oh, pow! Ooh, that felt good. <laughs> okay, do it again. Like a zip popping? This is like Dr. Pimple Popper, yeah. <laughs> Go again. No, I don't get sits. I'm an old man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at the stream on that one. <laughs> Bro. That guy's under 40. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One more. One more. You're such a beast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gate bumper. <laughs> Holding. That one was basically mint. Okay, let it go. Hit it. Ooh. Does it feel like there's a brake pedal? Oh, it feels this is like the best one we've ever had. What? The best you've ever had? Okay, let it go. I did. Okay, hit it. Okay, that works. Let's try this one. Okay, hit it. Oh, yeah. Let it go. Hit it. Perfect. Oil brakes, whole way around, only started with one leak. Honestly, not bad. That was only 11 minutes on the time lapse. Can you believe that? Do I still have microphone still working? Or mint? Okay. So that's where I'm leaving this thing. It's an absolute disaster. 
by working all day, I'm frozen. It's so friggin' cold out, and uh, I've had enough of it. So, I'm gonna leave it for now. I gotta clean up the garage, everything taken, uh, <laughs> taken together is what I was gonna say, but take two. Anyway, so we're all good here. I'm gonna put the wheels back on, I'll drop it on the ground. Up next, glass is going in. I'm gonna take all the trim off. Anything I haven't welded, I'll give a last little bit of welding because I wanna get ready for a clear coat. Windshield should be here in a couple of days. Then from there, um, we we'll probably start wiring up the motor actually, so we can do uh, all the sensors, all that MSD box, radiator in, fuel line, fuel pump plumbed, and uh, run some transmission lines. Just kind of stuff like that, but it kind of will look like a car, maybe even run and drive in the next couple of weeks. But I'm not gonna lie, I am enjoying this car. Don't get me wrong. You look good in this thing. You look. Uh, I look good in a Tri Five. Everybody looks good in a Tri Five. It immediately makes you look younger, grows in some hair, it comes off your back, goes on the top of your head. You look richer. It's good. But in this uh, thing I look richer? It's a two-door hard top. We didn't even have to make it. But uh, where's it going with that? It really threw glass. me off. Glass. We're doing glass. Oh, we're in January. We still got lots of time left. Canada. And uh there's no point in kind of thrashing on this thing. I, I have a pile of parts coming in the Camaro. I'm really excited to work on the Camaro. This thing I was really excited about to get to this level, and then I kind of lose a little bit of interest, but we'll power through. We'll make it so it runs and drives. We'll get it enclosed, get the glass in it. So I'm going to clear coat it, put the trim on, it'll look like something. Then it just needs all sorts of little stuff. You know, all the wiring, taillights, headlights. I don't even know what I have and don't have, so it might slow down a little until we, again, collect more parts. That's what I'm trying to do going forward is work on a thing until I've made a garage a huge mess run out of parts, pissed off Danielle, then... Hey! Take that back! Okay. Well, now I'm pissed off. That's I never, exactly right I now. never piss off Danielle. <laughs> well, I'm waiting on parts for the Camaro, so stuff has shown up for that car. we still got another video to do yet. I'm still waiting on quarters, but the tubs are here, the front end stuff is here. We're waiting on brakes, so do that. Get a pile, work through it, and then uh, get back on this thing, so we got to order more stuff. Thank you so much for watching. As always, where should they go? More... Well, Check out more Schmoo with Danny's so, Speed Shop. Danny's channel, she's legit just trying to run off of uh, ads. You know, Danny she's, here, Coattail Speed Shop. She's put, put out mediocre content for uh, maximum profits. But uh, if you don't mind subscribing to my channel as well as hers, leave a comment below. And I will see you on the next one. We're just trying to have a fun time in the garage here, even though it's freezing. Making uh, <laughs> mint 57 Chevys. All right, I'll see you later.